So we're going to set up or propose some sort of conversation guidelines that will help us have some productive conversations. So just before I share the hopes and fears back with you, I'm going to share a screen um, with a couple of sort of suggested um, conversation guidelines that might be a good starting point for discussion. So it can be difficult sometimes, you know, when we're all trying to talk on Zoom and getting used to these protocols. But as any good conversation, one of the things that can be key is that idea of one voice at a time. We also would like to suggest, if this is something people can agree to, that you know everyone has the right to speak and be listened to. And we really want, within your breakout groups, that opportunity for people to be able to be heard. As we move forward, we probably will disagree, but we'll ask people to, you know, try not to be disagreeable. Got this idea of step up and step back. If you know you someone who maybe you know does hold back, doesn't always sort of step, not always so sure about their opinions, please do as we move forward. Try and step up and share your ideas. But also at the same point, if you know you're somebody who just is like, hmm, always the first one in, always the first one to speak, make sure we do give other people a bit of space in their time too. One of the things that we do want to emphasize, particularly at the beginning here, is if we can this idea of sort of confidentiality. What's said in the Zoom room stays in the Zoom room. And that means, doesn't mean you can't talk about, talk to your friends and family about what you're doing. But what we'd ask you to do is not sort of talk about, you know, an X person said this and oh, you wouldn't believe what a person from here said. It's about not identifying individuals, but talking about, or particularly, you know, what, what the details of the conversations, especially till we get towards the end that we start forming some conclusions. And there will be stuff on social media about the, the climate assembly. It's up to you whether you, um, you know, identify yourself as an assembly member and join those conversations. But actually, even then, we ask you please not to sort of identify anything particular that individuals have said. And the other thing is, you know, we will have a few tech problems along the way. So try and be patient and supportive of each other. That's our, our initial suggestions and we're going to give you a second to sort of have a conversation about those, see if there's anything that needs to be added. But just before we do that, I know in the last um, breakout room you were talking about hopes and fears for the assembly. So just to share, here we are, these are some of the hopes that have come across for the Devon Climate Assembly that actually, you know, achieve something meaningful that actually will change views that we that you're listened to. There's a few there about people working well together, so hopefully the next conversation will start to, to make sure we're able to do that. That politicians listen, that actually achieve something, we'll see action, and it will make a difference in the future and you know, for grandkids' future and a green future. And I like the one there about sort of open minded, open mind. Enter it with an open mind and be open to see what happens. But, you know, likely, you again, you've come along to something that it's hard to imagine what is, you know, I doubt any of you have been involved in citizen assembly before. I might be wrong. But, you know, some of the fears that up there as well. That it's all doom and gloom, that's not listened to, that nothing gets implemented. And then, you know, this idea of a token exercise. And I guess, you know, there's been a lot of, investment in time and energy as well as your time and energy then hopefully you know we will see it. well the intent is it will make a difference that there are too many views to distill it's again a challenge that we act that actually we behave argumentatively that we can't find decisions that we get stuck in circular conversations and i guess it's really important to emphasize right now that's our job to make sure that we we do get to productive conversations we do get to finding where we've got those sort of points of common ground and agreement that we can really push forward to try and make some real change.